Our Debunking the Seven Myths program is designed for students 11th grade through college. This program addresses the seven leading myths about Genesis, creation, and the flood that are taught in today's colleges, even some Christian colleges. Myth number seven is dinosaurs died out millions of years ago, did not walk with man, and are not mentioned in the Bible. Just in the last 20 years, over 50 articles have been published in scientific journals that have documented 14 bioorganic materials in dinosaur bones that simply cannot be millions of years old. These include blood vessels, red blood cells, hemoglobin, bone cells, ovalbumin, chitin, unmineralized bone, collagen, limited DNA, skin pigments, FEX proteins, histones, keratin, and elastin. Just 20 years ago, most scientists simply assumed dinosaur bones were solid mineralized impressions of bones, but modern science has now revealed that many of the dinosaur bones are original, even at the molecular level. The laws of chemistry and biology and everything else that we know say that it should be gone. It should be degraded completely. This is not possible. I had the opportunity to speak with Mary Schweitzer about this because I wanted some clarification. For more than 10 years, I've wanted clarification on these you know, accumulating claims that they keep making. So, uh, Mary, uh, would you please give me your perception of these, these things listed, you know, the things that they've said here? So they list blood vessels, red blood cells, hemoglobin, bone cells, ovalbumin, chitin, unmineralized bone, collagen, limited DNA, skin pigments, FEX proteins, histones, keratin, and elastin. Now, I hope they're not saying that I and I alone did all of that because that is a culmination of work from a lot of different scientists. So so I'm not really sure how you want me to address this. Are they claiming that blood vessels prove the world is really old or really young? I mean, <laughs> well, the, the way that they describe this, uh, the way they describe the blood and the DNA and soft tissues, it, it, it sounds like they want us to make it think, make us think that it's not even a fossil at all, but still decomposing carcass. Uh, and uh, no, they, they want it to sound like it was bloody red meat. That was found somewhere, and absolutely and that, not. In absolutely their, not. In the documentary that they that they included, where they they clipped little bits of this documentary, where they you know the important part was just part of the quote mining thing that they do. Mm -hmm. They have somebody showing a bone, like in this one area of Madagascar, then the bone is just pure white, or the, the fossil is just pure white, and he says that it looks like a bone you just found out in the ground, like it had been you know bleached by the sun in the desert. And and these these kinds of bones would have been there a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. And that's how recent they want to make everything look. If you didn't know, you might think you're picking up a cow bone today, a bleached cow bone. Well, that's, first of all, the Madagascar material, and I've worked on some of it, is amazing. It is. It is. It does look like bleach bone. It doesn't feel like bleach bone. It doesn't act like bleach bone. But... What people don't understand is that has everything to do with the geochemistry of the depositional environment or the burial environment, where if, if I take a horse bone and I cut it out of a horse leg, it's going to be white. Most bone is white because of the minerals it contains. Now, if I lay that naked bone out in the sun and don't bury it, it's going to be really white and bleached. If I bury it in soils and sediments, it's going to turn brown. It doesn't take very long. So it has more to do with the chemistry of the environment than anything about the age of the bone itself. I, I don't understand that. I well, guess. one of their claims was that yeah, this is that one of the things that they said was that the, the bone they were finding or the, the yeah, the, the bones that they were finding, not the fossils that they were finding. They said that they were, were not uh, mineralized, that they were not fossils at all, that they were original bone, even down to the molecular level. And were they there when these bones came out of the ground? And did they do these analyses? Well, of course not. But that's that's what they're that's the claim that they're making. So they're they're basically making the claim based upon their own opinion and no data. As they've been doing throughout this entire series, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't watch the series. I, I there's a lot of things I just can't watch because I get too frustrated. But I've worked with Madagascar bone and I know the investigators who found it and described it. And first of all, claiming that bone is unmineralized is kind of stupid because 
if your bone was unmineralized in life, you wouldn't be sitting on a chair. Bone has to be hard and it's amazing. I mean, bone is one of the most amazing materials to science ever, but it is mineralized. If it's not mineralized, you're jello or there's something fundamentally wrong with you. So to claim that they have unmin unmineralized bone, well, I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, specifically, they say, you know, they found uh, blood vessels and red blood cells. And, and my, my thought there is when they find, we, it's often been said, you know, paleontologists will say that they found bones when in found, they found essentially stone. That is, you know, that's, uh, you know, that the, the fossil is no longer bone, but they'll call it bones. And so when you when you find the blood vessels, of course, you are finding the traces of the original blood vessel. When they when you said when they said that they found um, blood cells, for example, one of the studies that I read showed that it was actually the the iron based molecule heme. Which, of course, if, if since it is iron based, then in a fossilization process, that's not likely to be replaced by anything. So I mean, it's already a, a heavy enough element, you know. So and and we are talking about things that the, the soft parts that they crow about so often are are things that had they don't mention that these things had to be that they're microscopic amounts that they had to be uh, demineralized in an acid bath for mm -hmm. weeks. They, well, they want to imply okay. that there was no mineralization in the first place. So, um, first of all, one one thing about dinosaur studies for a long time it was assumed what you just said that bone turns into stone some kind of weird rock but as soon as we started looking at dinosaur bone under the microscope which modern studies were probably led by Armand de Reclaise in the 60s and 70s it isn't rock it has not been replaced the original microstructure of dinosaur bone almost always is present and it's really hard to tell the difference between dinosaur bone and any other kind of bone that you look at structurally. So I think that's one thing that that was a surprise even to scientists is that the bone is not the, the microstructure of the bone that makes it bone is preserved almost always. It's amazing. But that doesn't mean um I mean, it just means what it means to me is that we don't understand the the processes that are involved in fossilization per se. We don't even know what a fossil is, really, other than that it's evidence that a past life. But to say that you know a bone is a fossil, what does that even mean? Does it mean the bone is no longer bone? How would you <laughs> define that? And see, ultimately, all of science is about definition you choose your words carefully and to define to define a fossil bone is not just the exterior shape of it it is also the microstructure bone and that's the cool thing bone is bone whether it comes well except for certain fish if it's a vertebrate it has bone and bone by definition contains collagen and osteocytes and so we can see those microscopically, or we can see evidence of where there, there used to be those things in any, pretty much any kind of dinosaur bone. Cut it, look at it under the microscope. You see lacuna that once held dinosaur cells. You see channels that once held dinosaur blood vessels. And we've known that for a long time. That's not really all that controversial. What we don't understand is the fossilization process. How, how are those, how are those empty vacancies still empty and vacant and sometimes they're not but they're there and they're recognizable Does so in one of the one of the digs that i went to in one location uh the the, ver the bones would appear black because of the type of uh, right type, type of soil in the area and then there was another area you know slightly higher up several miles away where the bones would appear white yes uh, but if you look at them under the microscope you'll still see that microstructure yeah, and I've that I've seen where fossils have been, like uh, you know they had a cat. I think it's a cat scan. Am I using the right word? There, I don't think I am. But but there's a there's some way of like you know looking into a skull or whatever, at to, to or looking into just a rock to see the fossil within the rock. Yeah, mm -hmm. you yeah. can do that. So, I, I get what you're saying, and it's it's not the argument that that they seem to be making. No. 
So, but they don't understand. They don't understand what we have known. We who study fossils know, which is the microstructure of bone is preserved. So when I'm walking in the Badlands of Montana and I'm in the right age of rocks, which is also key, um, and I find a bone fragment, I can take that tiny little fragment and I can look at it under the microscope and I can say it's bone, period. It's not a rock and it doesn't need to be much. So bone is bone. Okay. I, I get what you're saying, but the way that they will take that, the way that they quote that is that it can't be millions of years old. No, and, that's not true at all. Well, uh, if you would, if you don't mind, then please explain to me how you have the perspective that, and I, I have to ask this also. Uh, I've had the impression once upon a time that you were initially a young earth creationist. Was I that was. true? You were. You were a young yeah. earth creationist. I was. In fact, okay. when, when I went into Jack's first class, I was an old married lady. I walked in, I sat down and I said, I'm going to convince you you're wrong about evolution. And he said, I'm an atheist. Have a seat. And that was to me, not only gutsy on his part, but he never tried to change my mind. And I will give him credit for that. He never tried to change my mind. He just said, have a seat. Let me unfold the data. And about halfway through that very first class, I thought, hmm, hmm, <laughs> there's an awful lot of data here that I was not aware existed. And so, um, I was not willing to throw out God. I know him. I can't deny his existence. So what I had to do is figure out how does science, how, how does, I mean, science cannot disprove God. Ask anybody. And so as long as it is not disproven, it remains a viable possibility. Now, that's not to say that science has not disproven a 6,000 year old earth. There is no evidence, scientific evidence for a 6,000 year old earth. There is no evidence that I can see in the rock record for a global flood. There is lots of evidence for local floods. We can see floods in the rock record. That's no big deal. But there is no validated verifiable evidence for a global flood. If, if I may younger. ask then, because I've been wanting to ask you this question for forever, what changed your mind Data. about the age of the earth? See, for me, God does not mislead anybody. And he gave us a brain. He gave us curiosity. And I think it makes him happy when we use what we have to understand his creation. But that does not mean God has to fit in the box of my expectations. He doesn't have to do things the way I think he should. And so when I realized, because a lot of what I was taught and what I think a lot of Christians today are taught, that there are evolutionists that are set out to destroy God. And that is absolutely not the case scientists go with data and i tell my students when you are wearing your science hat you don't have beliefs you have only one boring thing and that's data now when you're not wearing your science hat of course you have beliefs you have beliefs about everything but belief is not part of science science is data period so the people then who, who take clips of you saying that this or that is impossible and, and cleverly, cleverly edit them in their uh, quote mining technique, what would you say to them about how they are? That was I a quote. When I was first a student and I began to find evidence that these things were, that's, that dinosaur bones still retain some original signal, I was told that's not possible. I didn't ever say it. I was told that's not possible. And I'm like, okay, so that's not a scientific statement. If you are a scientist, all things become possible until they are disproven with data. And so, I mean, certainly not all things are equally likely, 
but to say never, to say I believe, those are specific terms. I have data. I have data that bone is bone. I have data that molecules persist. It's not a belief. I don't believe that molecules persist. I don't believe in all this stuff. I have data. And that's very, very different. Now, was I told by the scientific community that what I do is impossible? I'm never going to do this. Everybody knows. Yeah. And so it, what I would say to my scientific colleagues is don't say that because you are shutting the door to a lot of things, including, you know, I mean, if it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell me that organic, original organic molecules can't persist in dinosaur bone, I'm not going to be able to get funding. If I can't get funding, then I cannot prove you wrong. So it's kind of a catch-22. But from a scientific standpoint, just the process of science, I have a hypothesis that if I dissolve dinosaur bone and I get stuff that still is there, my hypothesis is that it was once part of the living animal. So if I take the mineral out of your bone, your bone becomes flexible soft and I can take pieces of it and tie it in knots your collagen to be able to function as bone you need both the organics and the mineral if I take the mineral away what science always said before this stuff was you take the mineral away you're not going to have anything left because all the organics were previously degraded now if I take a dinosaur bone and I dissolve away the mineral and I have something left what does that mean That means that you still have a, a very durable or a surprisingly durable collagen that was discovered now, to be. Much I have I have something that's that's not uh, going along with what is assumed to happen during fossilization. You see, whether it's collagen or not requires more data. Well, I, I read a study that was talking about you know that that collagen was one of those things that actually doesn't degrade anywhere near as as easily as was originally described or that it get that it can last you know orders of magnitude longer than previously understood that's true. And, I, and I, I i get and accept that but what i'm talking about with you is when people are trying to imply that your research proves a young earth yeah. and and you once held that held the opinion that the earth was young yourself what would you say about your own experience to these other people? I would say that, again, God does not mislead. And there, there is so much evidence across disciplines for an ancient, ancient earth and an even more ancient solar system and sun. And why is all that evidence? You've got geology, you've got astronomy, you've got astrophysics, you've got physics, you've got ge geochemistry, you've got molecular biology, you've got DNA, you've got morphology, you've got functional anatomy, functional morphology. All of these things support a very ancient earth and evolution as a means for bringing about diversity. Now, to say, well, yeah, all of this evidence exists, but God did it this way, demeans God, in my mind. Why would he put all those pieces of evidence in there just to trip us up? I don't buy that. I've talked to a number of uh, PhD scientists who happen to be Christian, and I, I keep getting the same comments from them. And, and my, my thought was always that if that men can tell stories and men write scriptures dedicated to their various gods. Men will be inspired by or moved by their various gods. But what's written in the rock is not something that, you know, you know people can tell tall tales, but we, we can't manufacture fossils all over the world. Yeah, and why would a god, as you say, put out all of this evidence pointing one way and all of it contradicts the book? Yeah. Well, does it really contradict the book if you're looking at scripture? The, the literal the interpretation of, of yeah, when, when you're counting back the, the genealogies or, or the, the generations back to Adam and calculate that it's 6,000 years, you know, in the year 4004 BC at 9 a.m. Yeah, no, 
that's that's problematic because if you if you do take Genesis literally, on day one we did this, on day two we did this, on day three we did this. How does a human define a day? Well, the way I I always read the story, I mean, like from the very first time I read the story, I had to see that as entirely metaphorical. That these are talking about stages. It it seems, and, and I think you're right about it is talking about stages and i think it's pretty amazing that the stages that are listed in genesis are pretty similar to what science says but humans mark a day as sunrise to sunrise or perhaps as sunrise to sunset right yeah but if the sun wasn't invented till day four and you want to take things absolutely literally how long were days one two and three were they 24 hours or were they indefinite the one you thing that I got from Christian, you know, scientific, science-minded Christians is that you know, their interpretation of the Bible is when God says, "Let the earth bring forth the mm -hmm. living thing." Yeah, um, that's that yeah, after their kind, which the way that they describe kind is, you know, it, uh, can have multiple meanings. That there's it's, there's no pinned down definition, but all of that fits with evolution perfectly. Yeah, it does. I the, agree. The, the problem is it, when when. Uh, to, to, to talk about you know creating the first man as a rib and the first woman separately and i don't know why creationists don't understand that males and females are not different species from each other but they they often make that argument that all of obviously that contradicts the literal interpretation of the bible i mean francis collins said that you know that, that this story of adam and eve as the literal first couple and the ancestors of all humanity it simply does not fit the evidence yeah all right. I don't know uh, how much more I can can get from you. I want to thank you very much for your for your time. I would hate to have a, I would hate to hang up and forget something important, uh, especially since it did take so long. To get. I've, been sending, <laughs> I've been sending messages to you for a long time before the first one you noticed. <laughs> oh, gosh, I, I don't. I try really hard not to ignore most messages. But if you want to go back to this list for just one second, blood sure. vessels, red blood cells, and hemoglobin, and bone cells, those are the things I work on. So if I if I am going to say I pulled out blood vessels from dinosaur bone, that's a hypothesis. Therefore, it must be testable. So how would I test that hypothesis? If they're blood vessels and not something else, first of all, what are the alternatives? Well, it could be bacterial slime. That was suggested by some of my colleagues. It could be fungi. It could be something else. Anything long and tubular could be a blood vessel. So if I'm going to say these are dinosaur blood vessels, what am I going to go looking for? I'm going to go looking for structure that makes it similar to all other vertebrate blood vessels. I'm going to look at location. I'm going to look at components. And I'm going to look at molecules blood vessels, and then red blood cells. If they're red blood cells, they should be in the same location as what we would find from modern. We should have some kind of evidence that blood cells can persist. And to be honest, I have never called those things blood cells. Other people have read my work and said, oh, they got to be blood cells, but I haven't. It's the same thing with hemoglobin. If I think I have hemoglobin, what should I be able to see using modern scientific methods? I'm not just saying this stuff is blood vessels. You have to rule out every possible alternative. And again, if you can't disprove it, then it's left standing until more data comes along. I would fully accept that you're finding, you know, the the uh, the, the traces of blood vessels exactly what you would expect to find, you know, in, in, a, in a fossil bone. When the first time I read this, the studies of your work, they, I remember the first revelation was that uh, the, the interior structure of uh, Tyrannosaur bone was very like that of an ostrich, which made mm -hmm. perfect sense since since ostriches are dinosaurs. Yes. But I, I certainly didn't get the impression that, that, that it was not fossilized, that it was too recent to be millions of years old and all of that. Well, last all, thing we, yes? all of the tests I've done on blood vessels, cells, hemoglobin, bone cells, et cetera, have nothing to do with time. And that's the difference. I'm not trying to say that these things are a thousand years old or less or whatever. They have nothing to do with time and the age of the earth or the age of the specimen that it came from. That's not my area. I don't test that. I look at molecules. All right. I have one, uh, one more question. Okay. 
uh, when they're talking about, they, they say unmineralized bone. You say that, okay, there's no such thing as an unmineralized bone, even a living person. Well, there is. I can do it in my lab, but you have to do it purposely because bone is bone because it's complex of protein and mineral. Okay. So there's no such thing as unmineralized bone. Not uh, in life. You can do <laughs> Not it. Not in life. Yeah. You can uh, take a mineral away from bone or you, if you get scurvy, for example, you have less mineral in your bone than normal, but your bone doesn't support yourself and you get curved legs. It's weak. One that I wanted to ask about was when they mentioned that they had found limited DNA. And I don't know what they mean by limited DNA. Yeah, yeah but the, the oldest DNA that I know of was uh, the, the sediment fossil. Or, and then previous to that, there was you know something from a, a, a mammoth or a, a woolly rhino. Mm -hmm. So Pleistocene uh, area, like the last two million years. Right. But they're, they're calling for dinosaur DNA. And I can't How find anything know? about anybody finding dinosaur DNA. How would you know that dinosaur DNA is dinosaur DNA? Well, I would imagine you... if you found it in a dinosaur fossil. Well, but even so, dinosaur, I mean, when you die, you're going to be invaded by microbes. So how are you going to differentiate microbial DNA from dinosaur DNA? I guess that gets into the word limited how limited? <laughs> well, you, you need sequence to say who it comes from, right? Yeah. And we have not yet obtained dinosaurian DNA sequence. I don't work with DNA, so this is not my work they're talking about. But what I can say is we have used four different methods to test those bone cells that we found to see if they might have the chemical signatures of DNA, not sequence. And it responds as if there's something chemically consistent with DNA there. What does that mean? It means absolutely nothing right now. It's not usable. It certainly doesn't generate sequence by the methods that we've used, but it is an intercalating stain that reacts with DNA and it's localized to the interior of these things we call bone cells. What I'm hoping is that my colleagues who do study ancient DNA would take another look at dinosaurs, but I haven't done it and I can't address that. All I can say is there's something chemically consistent with or that reacts with DNA stains, but without sequence data, you can't say who it belongs to. It could be coming from slobber and sweat from graduate students who dug these bones up, poor guys. Um, so you need sequence. And if you're not using the right method, you're not going to be able to say anything at all. And that's why I can't say we have dinosaurian DNA. It's not what I do. And actually, I'm not interested in it anyway. But um, chemically, we have sequenced proteins and shown histones, histone sequences. We can show keratin sequences or actually we can't show the sequences, but what we can show is that an antibody based upon sequence of keratin binds our ancient feathers, ancient claws. But it all depends upon how you word the questions. So limited DNA, I don't even know what that means. I have no clue. But it is not my work because I don't work on DNA. So I guess the summary statement would be that uh, whereas <clears throat> Somebody told you that the, with, the, with the knowledge of, say, 10 years ago, then this couldn't have happened. But now we, under, now, now we know better. And so there's, there's no indication from your work or any other work that you're aware of that implies a, an, an earth of holding thousands of years old. No. All right. Absolutely I don't know. not. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. I mean, what kind of data would you need to have? to support a 6,000 year old earth. What would it take? Data, well, I, hard repeatable data, because that's yeah. different than faith. Yeah, and uh, I've worked with a number of paleoclimatologists, uh, people that do uh, you know, radio, radiometric dating and such, and uh, I've been in the field a number of times. I've, 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 I'm aware of some of the data that you're talking about that goes the other way. And when I try to share it with, with people like this, it's fingers in the ears. Well, I would address your young earth listeners with one thing. 
Jesus only gave one command, and that is to love. Now, I have gotten emails from Christians who say I will go to hell for what I perceive or pursue. That is not love. You're not God. You don't know. How can you condemn me to hell? Because I am doing what I believe God opened the door for me to do. So if what you say as a young earth creationist violates Jesus' command to love, written you off anyway. And that's what scares me for my students. They come from a, a very religious young earth creationist background and they say, I can't believe anymore because the science is so strong. How do you meld faith and science? So I would say it's incumbent upon parents to learn the arguments, learn why scientists say what they say. Then you can help your students come to a combination, I guess, so that they don't have to throw out the faith you gave them and they can still do the science that they love. But to just write me off and say, I'm going to go to hell because I'm an evolutionary biologist, that's not love. And that's going to drive away my colleagues, period. So just, just food for thought out there. I always had a problem with the idea of a God who would condemn for a thought crime of what you did or whether you did or didn't believe. I don't think he does. And I, I mean, to, to God, I really truly believe that the ultimate test is love. And if you go around condemning someone without considering that God may have led them to this particular place and time, that's not up to you. So, I mean, I, as you can tell, that gets my back up because it causes so much more damage then it helps to maintain this hard, hard line when you do not know the mind of God. You don't know how he works. He tells you that and he warns you about that. So anyway, <laughs> that's just that's just my soapbox. Sorry about that. But uh, there's a whole lot of people that needed to hear it. And we, and I'm, I'm honored that you did that. You said all this on my channel and that I'll be able to be the one to share it. OK, well. It's, I'm nervous now. <laughs> Why? I, I just, you know, I mean, this, this is, this is me. It's not, I'm not trying to tell anybody else how to live and what they need to do. It's just where I've been led to. And I don't feel like I need to make an excuse for God as to how he, you know, why did he write the Bible and make the world look old or whatever? You know, I mean, that's, I believe very strongly in God, but I also believe in science as a way to see him. He says his fingerprints are all over creation. So if I go and I look, I'll see him if I want to. And it's just, I don't know, just kind of my weirdness makes me a little nervous. But yeah, that's how I feel. For me, uh, my naivete, when I started, uh, when I started my activism, I was initially arguing against the Texas Board of Education which was then trying to teach young earth creationism. They wanted to teach what they called the weaknesses of evolution. And it was claims like there are no transitional species in the fossil record, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I got into a debate, a moderated debate with one of these people. And Robert Bacher was one of my debate moderators. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so I mean, I, I selected uh, my, I selected a genetics, uh, instructor who was I knew I knew she was a Christian I knew she was active in her church like in, in, in doing a science interfaith thing in her church I got uh, geologist Glenn Morton um, who was again he, he used to be a young earth creationist and was still, like yourself he still believes in God but he's no longer a creationist I specifically chose moderators that were Christians and trained in science you know, I had paleontology geology genetics and my thought was that my opponent wouldn't be able to say anything that was factually false because the moderators would call him out on that. And having that I chose all Christian scientists, uh, and, and you have to hesitate because I live in Texas, we have a group called the Christian scientists, which are yes. anything but scientists. Yes. So yeah, it makes things a little bit muddy. I didn't want it to devolve into a God versus no God argument. That was never what I was trying to, to argue. Right. Uh, but he, but my opponents and unfortunately, even the moderators turned it into that immediately. 
No. Yeah, it is so. God we're, we're, is outside of science. We cannot use scientific methods to prove his existence or disprove it. So my my opponent stated in the in the debate, which was in in writing, and unfortunately, and it, it it was the first debate that I ever did. Somebody was hosting it for me, uh, and it, it, a long time ago, and um, it, it's no longer available online. I'm sorry to say, but the guy wrote out that he knew that there were transitional species in the fossil record, but he said he wanted to teach students that there were none because he said it was important that they believe there are none. And that's that summarizes like the entirety of the creationist movement to me. I'm like, okay, so you know what the truth is and you're going, you, and you're okay with lying about that mm -mm. in order to control what the kids believe. You want to that is never what God would have us do. Absolutely never. I do not believe that for a moment. And that I'm with you. It, it, it hurts me. It hurts me to see that there are people out there who think they have to make excuses for a God. I mean, what if God did make an ancient earth? What if it's really 4.6 billion years old? Well, I have to make excuses for him and I have to manipulate the data. So it looks young. That doesn't make any sense at all. God's bigger than that. He didn't need me to run interference for him. He did what he did. The argument that I use is if you have to lie to defend your truth, then it yeah. wasn't truth to begin with. <laughs> I agree completely on that one. And it's hard and it's painful, but a lot of it comes from a lack of knowledge. People are afraid that if one thing is wrong or one thing is questionable, the whole ball of wax falls. Well, your God isn't very big if that's the case. Yeah, that's another difference we mentioned earlier in the conversation about you know, different uh, modes of thought going into this. Any number of things uh, could be disproved within evolution. I mean, like, you know, the idea of whether whether megabats and microbats were mm -hmm. were monophyletic or were they two different groups. Uh, for example, you know, the genome comes back and says, OK, well, they're, they're actually uh, monophyletic. And it turns out that uh, anteaters and aardvarks and pangolins are not the monophyletic group that we thought they were. Again, the genome shows otherwise. Then when these things happen, my position simply changes on that. That doesn't mean that all scientists are wrong or that all science is wrong or no. that all of evolution is wrong. But the, the believers, when, they, when, they're especially, when they're especially dogmatic like this, when they're especially dogmatic like this, then... Um, it, it seems that they, I've often heard the phrase that they will have to, they, they want to accept everything is a package deal. So if they're going to believe in God at all, then they have to believe in absolute biblical literalism. They have to believe in Noah's flood, all of it. And that if anything was ever disproved, any, if there's any contradiction that they can't get over, then they're going to go straight to atheism. Yeah, no, that's wrong. Yeah. That's wrong. <laughs> All right. I don't want to take any more of your time. You, you've been, uh, it's been a very good conversation for me. I, you've given me valuable material for this series to, to, to end this series. And I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Good luck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh -huh. See bye -bye. ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It takes longer to correct a lie 
than it does to tell it. And that's why uh, these young earth creationists love to do um, live debates where they get equal time because it, they can tell more lies in one minute than you could, than you could uh, correct in an hour. Well, but is it a lie necessarily? Yeah. Uh, when they, when they, when they say that there is uh, evidence of no, of Noah's flood and uh, yeah, that's, it, when when they say well, what's what's my favorite one? There's never been a bit. I did a book on the foundational falsehoods of creationism on some of the, mm -hmm. the main lies. Like when they say that uh, Australopithecus afarensis was a hoax. Oh yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, they believe it with all their heart, but no matter how hard you believe it, does not make it true, which can be used for any argument, I guess. So, you know, I guess for me, one of the things that I try to talk to my students about, talk to people about is science is one way of looking at the world. And it's very small, very orderly. There's a lot of stuff science cannot address. That doesn't make science wrong and it doesn't make things science cannot address wrong. But you gotta, you gotta understand the rules of the game. And if you walk out onto a football field playing basketball in your head, you're gonna get killed. And that's kind of how I view science versus creation science. Uh, there's a, there's a lot ways. of differences in thinking between the two. I mean, for and, and differences in everything, to be honest. Yeah, and if you try, if you try to play science by creation science rules, you're going to get killed because they're not the same thing. So one of the things uh, we, we look at the confirmation bias. I mean, for w when they want to, when they ask for evidence of evolution, they they specify that they want one hundred percent absolute mathematic proof, and they'll accept nothing less for evolution. But that's right. yeah, that's a fundamental misunderstanding of science because we do not prove anything in science; we disprove or we fail to disprove, and that's and a I subtle difference. But it's everything. I try to explain to them that we're look that this is an investigation, not a belief system. Mm -hmm. But again, the, 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 that that message is not communicated because for them it is a belief system, and that's and they they want to say that that I have a faith based belief, it, it, that, and so I'm just that that science is just like religion because it's based on faith, and religion has evidence just like science, and and that's what we get yeah. all the time.